Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's online class, Ergonomics 101. My name is Vanessa Lardo, and I work for Beaver Medical Group as a corporate health and wellness educator and registered dietitian. Welcome to today's class. So what exactly is ergonomics? If you've never heard of that word before, you think it sounds kind of strange. Uh, I think it does as well, so you're not alone. Um, but basically, ergonomics is the way that your body um, it means it's how the it's designing the job or work process to fit the person. So I'm just going to read it right off the slide. <laughs> um, that's exactly what ergonomics means. I am not um, somebody who always follows the ergonomic rules, but I do think it's highly important to follow them because I've noticed, and I'm sure you have too, that when you're sitting at um, your desk for a long time in a really awkward position, maybe you have your legs crossed or maybe you're slouched over or possibly um, you have your computer screen sideways or whatever it may be that's not proper ergonomics, um, your body tends to feel really tight afterwards or you might have some pains or aches. And so a lot of times those back pains or different aches that we have in the body come from and stem from not having good ergonomics with your home. Like right now, a lot of us are working from home. And so we maybe set up these desks at our homes that aren't necessarily ergonomic friendly. Uh, we might have our computer screen way down too low or way up too high. We may be crouched down at a small desk. We maybe don't have the best support for our backs. And the same thing goes um, with work. A lot of times we also don't really think about the ergonomics at work. We might have a lot of papers on our desk or have the phone too far away where we're constantly reaching and compromising our back again. So Basically, ergonomics means designing the job or work process to be able to fit your person so that you don't compromise your limbs, your body, your wrists, ankles, whatever it may be, over using certain areas of your body too much and in awkward ways. So today we're going to be talking about how you can have better ergonomics with your home or um, your office space and then also being able to do some stretching to uh, alleviate any sort of tension you might have in your body from sitting for too long and things like that. So we'll get right into it. So these are forms of improper ergonomics. So do any of these look familiar to you? In fact, right now I have my legs crossed and I'm gonna go ahead and uncross them. Um, so as you can see, a lot of times we tend to slouch when we get tired. Um, you might even put your feet up at home. Um, you might even have a bunch of papers everywhere where you can't really find anything or you have your laptop on your lap rather than on a desk. Uh, maybe you even use the phone by uh, using your shoulder to hold it in place. And then of course, very common to slouch forward when we're tired. So again, we want to sit up straight and on the next slide I'll show you a checklist that you can use to better uh, be able to see if you do have good ergonomics at home. But these are pretty common forms. Um, I constantly have to remind myself to sit up straight. That's one of my common issues. So maybe you see yourself in one of these pictures too. So here are some common chair issues. A lot of times we don't use the back support, we lean forward. We might also use the arm rest incorrectly where we have our shoulders hunched up. So if you ever have any sort of neck pain or shoulder pain, it's typically because you have your shoulders up too high or you might be stressed out. Um, again, you know, having your feet hanging and not really touching the floor is another reason why we tend to have um, issues later on as far as if you have aches and pains, could be to the, due to the fact that you are doing these things incorrectly. These are some common keyboard issues. So sometimes if you have the keyboard too far left, too far right, too far forward, you're going to be reaching. Um, also trying to type up instead of having a, a neutral position with your wrist. We really want to be able to have our wrist as neutral as possible. If you're constantly um, turning it one way or the other, or even up and down, that could cause issues again later on with arthritis, carpal tunnel, different things like that. So you just really want to be mindful that you're keeping things as neutral as possible with your wrists and your fingers. So here are some common monitor issues. So sometimes if you have the monitor too far forward, you're going to end up punching over to see the letters or the font. Um, you could also have 
the monitor to the side because you're making space for writing. So trying to figure out how you can start to clean your workspace, make more space just for your laptop or just for your computer if you're at home or you're at work um, so that you're not taking up too much space with unnecessary clutter and also just makes you feel better when your space is more organized. All right, so um, we talked about keyboard issues and then again, trying to keep your wrist neutral is really important. So here's some common mouse issues. If you're constantly flexing up, down, side to side, it could really put a lot of strain on your wrist and you might start feeling wrist tension later on. So here's some, um, this is a common ergonomic checklist that you can use today. You, this is helpful from working from home or in the office. So for your chair, you want to check off um, each one of these to make sure that each one is in line as well as with the keyboard on the far right. But for your chair, like we mentioned earlier, just trying to sit up straight, um, keeping your shoulders neutral, not up because you're stressed. Um, trying to, with the arch of your back, should be supported by the chair. Or if you're at home, you can always put a pillow because a lot of times our home chairs if they're wooden or they're metal, they don't necessarily have that support that you would get from an office chair. Um, so you can always roll up a towel and put it behind your back or even a pillow. You want to have your feet flat on the floor or on a footrest. You can always put them up on um, a box that's tilted. And then um, if the chair has armrests, if you're at home or in the office, just make sure that they are at 90 degrees and that they're not pushing your shoulders up and then your legs bent in a 90 degree angle. And again, I mentioned you can always put a box under your feet if you need to get alleviate some tension or also if your feet don't touch the floor, that box can help you to have your knees and your legs at a 90 degree angle. So then with the keyboard, um, your shoulders again need to be in a neutral position. Keyboard should be um, close enough where you can have your elbows bent at a 90 degree if they're too vertical or, hor I'm sorry, not vertical, but horizontal, um, then you're reaching too far forward and you want to make sure that keyboard comes a little bit closer to you. Again, wrist at a neutral position, keeping the keyboard flat so you're not having to lift your hands up to type, meaning that your wrist will be flexing up or down, but keeping it neutral will help to keep your wrist neutral. And then also keeping the mouse right next to the keyboard, trying not to, again, have to reach too far. Um, and a lot of times the reasons that you're reaching is because you might have things in the way. So trying to avoid clutter will be really helpful. And so then also you have a checklist for your monitor and phone. For your monitor, you want to keep um, the monitor about 20 to 26 inches away from you. So if you want to, you can get out your handy to, uh, ruler and measure that to see if that's exactly how it is. And then want to make sure at the top of the monitor slightly below eye level. So not too high and not too low where again, you're straining your neck, but you want it to be neutral. Um, and so you can always put your laptop if you're working from home on a box or even in the office, if it's too low, you can always put it on a box or a couple of books. Um, and possibly even get a standing desk if that's something that you're looking into. You can talk to um, somebody in your department, your director, to see if that's something that you qualify for based off of if you have any sort of back issues, you can always ask for that. All right, and then for your phone, you want to keep the phone within easy re reaching distance. I know for me, if I'm at home or if I'm at work working, um, sometimes I keep my phone really far away and every time you get a call, you have to reach for it. So again, if you aren't keeping your core tight, you could hurt your back or tweak it if you're especially sensitive by having to reach too often. Um, using a headset is also great. That way you're not using your shoulder to keep your phone in place. Um, and so those are just some simple, uh, a simple checklist that you can use for your monitor and phone. Then for the mouse, the mouse should be located right next to the keyboard. Um, again, don't try to over grip it if you're stressed out. Um, you know, you can use like a stress ball instead, uh, but move your whole arm when you're using the mouse rather than just the wrist. So again, that you're not moving the wrist from side to side. 
And then um, for other items, try to store your documents and binders and supplies within reach, easy reaching distance. If they're up overhead in a bin, you want to keep them a little bit closer. Closer. You can also organize your workstation to fit your needs. Um, so just take a look around you, see how you can better allocate things, how you can better organize things. It's just going to make you feel um, more in control of your day, of your time management. If you have too many things out, you're going to feel constantly distracted as well. All right. And then if you are at home or even in the office, um, there's some environmental ergonomics that you can also work on. So trying to work next to a window is fantastic if you can, but trying not to work directly in front of it. So I was actually doing that at the beginning. Um, of social distancing when we started working from home. I had my laptop right in front of the window and so the glare from the sun was always hitting my eyes and it was bothering me so finally I turned to the side. It was an easy fix um, but something to definitely keep in mind. And then also you want to make sure that you keep food away from your table whether at home or work that way you're not getting crumbs everywhere number one and number two um, it will help you as well with your waistline so you're not constantly eating but it'll also be out of the way so you have more room and space for other things that you need to get done if you can have natural plants in the house or at work um, that helps a lot to improve productivity by 15%. Who would have thought? So having some nice plants around can be awesome as well. If you need, you can get noise canceling headphones to drown out distractions. This can be especially useful at home, but even in the office, sometimes we hear a lot of noises around us. And if you're anything like me, I get easily distracted if I hear something. So just trying to um, think of ways that you can put on your noise canceling headphones. Um, myself, I actually use some earplugs sometimes while I'm at work and that really helps to keep me focused. Um, so those are just some simple things that you can use to make your environment a little bit better. Uh, and let's see, always trying to keep things not too cold, not too warm. And then choose colors around you that are aesthetically appealing to you, that make you happy, that help you to feel more productive. Great. So here's a simple practice that you can use. It's the 20-20-20 rule to reduce eye strain. So if we are constantly looking at our computers, we could get some eye strain. So you want to make sure that every 20 minutes you look 20 feet away for at least 20 seconds. And that will be really helpful for you um, to not cause a lot of eye strain and then headaches later on during the day. You can also use blue light filtered uh, glasses to help you while you're looking at a computer screen that can really help with tension in the eyes, especially with fluorescent lighting at, in our work offices. Not so much at home because it's more that ambient lighting, but in our offices, sometimes we need um, blue light filters. You can even actually, if the fluorescent light bothers you while you're working, I know it does for me, you can always um, turn those off and have a nice, ambient lighting from a lamp that you bring from home and that can be helpful for eye strain as well. Also remember to get up and stretch at least every 20 to 30 minutes even if it's just for a minute or so. You can also use the stand-up app if you are forgetful and you are somebody who really gets into your work. You can use this app that's free. You can download it to your phone which then if you have an Apple watch or um, a Samsung watch, it'll remind you by vibrating your wrist to get up every so often. And you can do these easy mm -hmm. stretches that you can do um, from home or in the office, but basically just holding each stretch, stretch for about 10 to 15 seconds. And so um, for the first one, you basically are flexing your hands out, raising them up over your head, um, giving your sides a good stretch and your shoulders if you shrug them up and then down and then also tilting your head to the side to give your shoulder a good stretch. Um, and then for the seven and eight that you see there, that's great for the wrists, just turning your hands like in a prayer motion up and down to really help the wrists. And then turning from side to side in your chair as you see in number 10 to again give your side a good stretch. And then also your back as you see in number 11. So these are great stretches. If you do want them, you can feel free to email me at vallardo at epicopy.com and I'll be more than happy to email this to you. 
Here's some other ways that you can think about standing up, whether again, working from home or in the office. You can stand talk while you're on the phone. I love doing that, just pacing and talking. Um, and then you can also stand if you're participating in an online meeting, which we're having a ton of those right now. So just stand um, while you're listening, or you can even walk in place. Uh, and then if you are reading a lot of documents or things like that, um, you can always stand to read as well. All right, so here's a great way to start your day on the right foot. So if you are working from home and you feel that um, you need to get into a better routine, then even, even if you are starting to go back to the office, this is a great way to start your day so you can have the most productive day. So making sure that you do wake up and the first thing you do instead of drinking your coffee is hitting that water. So making sure that you're drinking at least 12 ounces of spring water, a little bit of salt and some lemon can really rehydrate the body after having slept the night before. And then a little bit of movement, if it's just five to 10 minutes outside to get some natural light and to start to wake the body up. And then right after that, taking a really cold shower is a great way to jumpstart the nervous system, get you going for the rest of the day, getting you alert. Um, and so that's something that's been really helpful for a lot of people and a lot of experts in the field. And then having a higher fat, high protein breakfast rather than something that's super sugary. So instead of hitting Starbucks on the way to work, if you wanna get a coffee, that's fine. But instead of getting, let's say like a cake pop or um, something that's super sugary, like a sugary cereal, instead if you increase something like avocado with let's say a hard boiled egg, that's gonna sustain you a lot longer and be better for your brain health. Um, so you can be more productive than something that's higher in sugar. You can also think about getting some healthy snacks in um, about, you know, every three hours or four hours, you want to get two healthy snacks in during the day. So packing that healthy snack, you can even pack it for the home. So if you're still working from home, just having those healthy snacks that you can easily grab is awesome. But if you're going back to work, taking those healthy snacks to work is also super beneficial. So something like nuts and an apple, a string cheese and orange, are both really easy, healthy snacks. And then trying to hydrate at least every 20 to 30 minutes because our body is mostly made of water. So you really wanna keep rehydrating. Even if you're sitting most of the day, you wanna make sure you're getting that water in at least every 20 to 30 minutes. So you can pair it up with your stretching, just knowing that that's your stretch and water break. Here's some awesome ergonomic supplies that you can look into. Um, something for your feet. If your free feet um, do get swollen, um, you can always have a rest for them. Uh, something for documents, like a document holder, so you're not awkwardly trying to read things. If you're typing a headset, making sure that your chair is supportive for you or getting like some sort of lumbar support. Um, all of these are really great ways to help you and your body. So you can actually reach out to um, HR. HR has an ergonomics department that would be more than happy to come and see if, how they can work on your space to make it more ergonomic friendly. Like I mentioned, a lumbar support would be great or like a back brace or something like that. Both really great things to help you to keep your back supported. So definitely use the ergonomic checklist that I gave you. Um, I can email this presentation to you so you can have it handy so you can check off the checklist and make sure that your space is ergonomic friendly. I know we're not perfect and we're never going to do it perfect, but trying to at least um, have some of the things checked off is better than none. And then we'll just um, go quickly through some of these other like ind industrial ergonomics. I'm um, just making sure that if you are working more in an industrial setting, that you are being mindful of your back. And if you need to use a back brace um, to carry heavy things, then that's really important as well. But making sure that if you are reaching overhead, um, that you try not to do that. If you need to get a ladder, that would be better so you're not putting strain on your shoulders. Um, also trying to, you know, make things better for your body ergonomically. So if you need to turn something to drill it, or if you need to pick up a box, make sure that you're using proper form. And then if you are in an industrial setting, trying to talk to your supervisor about rotating and making sure you get your brakes so that your body is not in constant motion and you're not in constant strain. So trying to rotate with other workers to make sure that um, you guys are evenly distributing the work. 
We mentioned earlier trying not to reach overhead for things. Really important so again you don't compromise your spine. I know plenty of people who have had little um, twinges in their back when they have been you know twisting or turning or reaching too often. And then also you can look into a stand-up workstation. So something where um, you can stand up every so often. Again, I mentioned earlier, if you want to talk to HR about that, you can always ask them um, to do an evaluation to see if you qualify to get a standing desk. That can be really beneficial for you in the long run. And if you do get a standing desk, you can always get a mat to stand on. That will be helpful for you so that you don't have back pain from standing on a harder surface. And then safe lifting is super important as well. So making sure that if you are lifting heavy boxes, that you make sure you're not bend at the waist. We really don't want you bending at the waist like you see in the first picture, um, but rather lifting with your legs. So making sure you crouch down and you lift with the muscles in your legs rather than your back, because that's where a lot of us get um, back injuries. So being very careful with that. This is a little bit better picture of how you can properly lift the box. And home ergonomics is super important as well. So if you do um, have a quality mattress, that's fantastic. But if you don't, let's say you've had it more than 10 years, you definitely want to rotate it out and get a new mattress uh, because a lot of times they tend to dip in the middle with our weight. So you want something that's going to support your body a little bit better. Also, the position that you sleep is super important, uh, making sure you have a proper pillow, um, making sure that you do try to at least you know, sleep more naturally rather than in awkward positions as much as possible. I know it can be difficult, but trying to think of ways that you can fall asleep in a more natural position, like on your side or your back. Um, and then also, because we are home more often and, and practicing social distancing, you want to try to limit the amount of time that you're playing video games, texting, or on Facebook, because a lot of times holding objects can again cause you to be in awkward positions and have your hands feel cramped from holding something for so long. So give yourself a little bit of a break, go do something else, take a walk, drink some water, and that will be helpful for you. So we talked a little bit about choosing the right mattress. So um, if you are looking to uh, buy a new mattress because you've had yours for too long, uh, then just making sure you get one that's good for your height, your age, and your weight and sleeping position. So there's a lot of websites that you can actually go to now where you can enter in all that information and they'll find the perfect mattress for you, whether it be a soft mattress or a medium mattress, but based off of all of those things that you um, take like a little survey, they'll let you know which mattress is the best for you. And with proper ergonomics, we also want to talk about weight management. Sometimes uh, if we are sitting for a long period of time, um, we are more sedentary, then weight management can be really beneficial in helping you to uh, not have those aches and pains in your body from being more sedentary and things like that. So trying to reach a healthy weight by using the healthy weight calculator you can just type that in or google it and it'll pull up a calculator that you can use that again will ask you your age your activity level and your height and then it'll tell you what weight you should be for for all of those things so trying to watch your portions is the easiest way to lose weight uh, you don't have to exercise all day long to lose weight it's really just watching those portion sizes, trying to use a smaller plate, trying to not overeat by eating it um, and grazing all throughout the day, but then just choosing your two to three meals per day and sticking to those. And then exercise is really important because it does help you to prevent injuries. So, and also helps you with your cardiovascular health. So trying to exercise three to five times per week for at least 30 minutes at a time. So really not that much that you need to stay physically fit. And then strength training, you do want to incorporate that as well because muscles do help to protect your spine and help to build your core so that again, you can prevent injury um, even while you're working from home or from your desk at work. So I mentioned that exercise is really important. So I'm gonna show you some 
easy exercises that you can do to help train your abdomen, your back, and your glutes. So these will be really important because they will help you with your ergonomics and having better ergonomics. So uh, let's go through each one of those. Oh, before we do, let's just quickly talk about aerobic exercise. So aerobic exercise, as I mentioned earlier, you want to do that three to five times a week for 30 minutes. Um, and so you can do just easy walking, cycling. Um, if you want to buy a bicycle, you can always get one on Opera, Berleco, um, dancing like Zumba. You can uh, find free videos on YouTube. And then swimming, if you want to go to the beach or go to the lake, you can always do that. Or if you have a swimming pool at home, you can do that as well. So crunches are going to be great because that's going to help build your core so that, again, you can protect your spine. So just easy crunches where um, you just do you can do 20 crunches and then rest for 30 seconds and then another 20 crunches and rest and then finish with your third set of 20 crunches. You can also do it this way. If you don't have any back issues, you can lift your feet up off the floor. But if you do have back issues, you want to make sure that you keep your feet firmly planted on the floor. And then these are glute exercises. They're called bridge. Um, and so you're just basically lifting up your glutes and squeezing them and then coming back to a neutral position. Again, everything you can think of, um, doing them at least 20 repetitions and then for three sets. And squats are also really awesome to help build your glutes, help build your hamstrings, and then your quads can be really great, um, especially because this will help you to have better ergonomics within the home and the office. So with a proper squat, you do want to make sure that your knees are behind your toes. So if you want to use a mirror, you can always find a mirror at, you know, at home and then practice a couple of times. But just think about yourself putting your weight in your heels as if you were um, doing so for sitting down. So when you sit down, we typically put our weight in our heels. So I have that same mindset whenever you're doing a proper squat. So to summarize everything, uh, try to use a checklist. I can always email that to you. Again, my email is bialardo at epiclp.com. Um, I would be more than happy to send that to you so you can kind of see if you are having that proper uh, ergonomic checklist going on. And then trying to stretch at least uh, every 20 to 30 minutes and grab your water at the same time so you can download um, the stand-up app that can be really helpful for that and then remembering to work on your core doing your strength training exercises and aerobic exercises so you can manage your weight and you won't be as uh, prone to injury if let's say you do have improper ergonomics those muscles are going to protect your body a little bit more all right so since this is not a live class. We won't be having questions, but if you do have any questions, feel free to email me at vialardo at epicopy.com, and I would be more, happy, more than happy to send this uh, PowerPoint to you, as well as the ergonomic checklist, so that you can have it handy just to have and see um, if you are uh, using all the proper ergonomics in your home and workspace. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and we'll talk soon.